A few days back, more than 500 Chinese STEM students' visa applications to study at major American universities were rejected by the U.S. government over security concerns. CCP's mouthpiece complaining that this is a toxic legacy of the Trump administration. Hmm, interesting. Why did the U.S. reject these Chinese students' visa applications? Are they really a threat to U.S. security? In this video, we are going to delve into the reasons behind this. Welcome to Beyond the News, I'm Faye. The main reason the US government decided to reject these Chinese students' visas is because of their connections with the Chinese Communist Party, more specifically, both the connection with Chinese military and the Chinese Scholarship Council, or CSC for short. Why would I say that? Firstly, many of the students have the background of National Defense 7, that is, the seven universities in China that have direct links with China's Ministry of Industry and the Chinese military. Four of those seven universities have already been listed as an export-controlled entity by the U.S. Department of Commerce. As for the CSC, lots of Chinese netizens found out that students who have been rejected are mostly sponsored by the China Scholarship Council. Then what is the problem with the CSC? I've done some research. This CSC mainly selects Chinese students or scholars and provides them with scholarship. This scholarship is divided into two categories. One is to study abroad for a degree and the other is for joint training. The so-called joint training is equivalent to studying in a foreign university for a period of time, then returning to China to apply for a degree after graduation. Therefore, this is also known as the Chinese Communist State Scholarship for Study Abroad. The scholarships are for full-time staff or students in China high-end universities, enterprises, institutions, administrative agencies, and scientific research institutions who are at least 18 years old. When applying for CSC scholarship, they must have a sponsorship. That is someone vouch for you to not betray the Chinese Communist Party. College students or official staff of state-owned enterprises have a relatively higher chance of getting approved. Even worse, for those students who have obtained a scholarship, there are requirements for them to return to China. They have to participate in many of CCP's strict political reviews and rigorous political training, aka brainwashing. All this information is on China's embassy in the United States. To be a Chinese government-sponsored scholar, you need to be, first, go through the governmental selection, meaning political review. After passing that, you need to go to some training centers and prepare to be brainwashed or spy training. The propaganda was mostly about the absolute love for the party. After that, you are allowed to go to America. But even when you are in the land of the free, you are not exactly free. You must regularly report the learning situation on their platform. Finally, at the end of your education, they will do a final review to see if you are eligible to return to China. In other words, these students, no matter where they go or what they do, they are still under the regime's monitor all the time. Actually, over the past years, the Chinese Communist Party has been actively encouraging students to study abroad because one of the goals is that these students can steal technology from the West and bring it back to China. In the CCP propaganda, this is considered a patriotic act. An example the CCP always uses is the famous scientist Chen Xuesen. In China, Chen was known as the father of Chinese rocketry. He was officially honored by the Chinese Communist Party as a class one hero. How did he obtain his knowledge in these fields? Well, Chen was educated at MIT and during World War II, he was involved in the Manhattan Project, the project for building the world's first atomic bomb. Chen was not the only one in stealing crucial technology from the US. For decades, there have been many people like Chen who brought their knowledge back to China and led various technological developments in China. Their patriotism made them become role models for many young people who are interested in scientific research. 
Furthermore, the technology developed in the West can often instantly transfer into commercial values. This is very different from the ivory tower style teaching and scientific research in mainland China. Plenty of theoretical but not much practical applications. We'll use an example to illustrate this. Liu Ruopeng is a billionaire in China and a representative in China's National Congress. Liu graduated from the Duke University in 2009 with a master's degree and a PhD and led the team to successfully develop the invisibility cloak. When Liu returned to China, he was hailed as a pioneer of Chinese metamaterials. However, the Duke University published an article in the school newspaper called The Chronicle questioning him as an academic spy. Dr. Smith from the Duke University is an expert on metamaterials. Yes, reports said that Liu claimed to be a fan of Dr. Smith in 2006, so he decided to apply to Duke University and started under Dr. Smith. Liu worked in Smith's laboratory for three to six months and participated in several projects, including the Invisibility Cloak project back then. There was a rumor saying that one day Liu took advantage of Dr. Smith's absence and illegally photographed the equipment of the invisibility cloak in the laboratory. After leaving the United States, he made a copy of the device for research and development in China. Dr. Smith thinks that this is an act of stealing. Because the stolen technology has very important applications in the military. Dr. Smith's team also received financial support from the U.S. Pentagon. As a result, the FBI officially launched an investigation of Liu in 2010. However, there were no results from the investigation yet. But because of this technology, Liu has already become a super-rich billionaire in China. Baidu shows that Liu is ranked 24th with 4.1 billion in the 2019 Hu Ren Under 40s China Rich list. Some say he is the person who caused the United States to expel a large number of Chinese students. He was accused of stealing technology from the US and made himself a fortune. Now, you get the picture as to why CCP is so eager to send Chinese scientists to study abroad and why the US now refuses these people, right? And the reality is that this act from the US have angered China surely again. CCP's mouthpiece Global Times called this an evil legacy from the Trump administration. And one of the wolf warriors, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Zhao Lijian, said at a conference that China has expressed serious concerns about this and has launched a complaint with the US government. The Communist China is urging the US to correct its mistake and reviewing the Chinese students' applications and stop using various excuses for unreasonable restrictions and suppression of Chinese students. So is it really a mistake? Is it interesting that the CCP is using the word of suppression in the democratic USA? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. To sum it up, it seems that no matter who is at the present position, the US is no longer a place where the CCP spies can roam free and steal America's science and technology freely. But for those mainland Chinese people, most of them have no clue of all this background information. That's why they are protesting in front of the US embassy. Because all the propaganda they heard was America is bullying China for no reason. One of the CCP's tricks is to make you angry so that you will hate other countries like this for their political agendas. I really wish that those Chinese students who are currently living or studying in the free world be able to understand freedom and democracy and the truth of all the propaganda from the CCP. All right, that's all for today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to do so and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching Beyond the News. I'm Faye. Until next time.